Hi everyone, my name is Andrea and I'm a children's librarian at the White Bear Lake Library and that's a part of Ramsey County Library. And you might notice that I'm not at the library today. I'm at Tamarack Nature Center and I'm so excited to be here. And I'm here for a special story time about snakes. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna sing some songs and then I have a couple of books to read. And then my friend Heidi from Tamarack is going to show you and talk to you a little bit about snakes. And so I like to start out story times with a song. So I thought that's how we would start today as well. So we often sing clap and sing hello to begin story time. So I thought since we're gonna talk about snakes, maybe we could add some snakes sounds and movements to that song. And we know snakes go hiss, right? So should we add hiss? And then we also know that snakes like to slither. So we'll slither and say hello and then how about, how about we do a rattle? Maybe we can shake our hands like that. We'll rattle and say hello, okay? Let's get started. So, and we'll get started with rattle. We'll rattle and say hello. We'll rattle and say hello. With our friends at Tamarack, we'll rattle and say hello. We'll slither and say hello. We'll slither and say hello. With our friends at Tamarack, we'll slither and say hello. And hiss. We'll hiss and say hello. We'll hiss and say hello. With our friends at Tamarack, we'll hiss and say hello. Good job! That was awesome! And then I have one more song and it of course includes a snake and some snake sounds and movements. So we know that snakes say hiss, but did you also know that snakes say shooby dooby doo? No, they don't say shooby dooby doo, but that's kind of the funny part of the song. So we'll start out by hissing and then we'll get to the funny shooby doo part for the, for the second part. And then we'll also do this song a couple of times so you have a chance to get it the second time around. So hiss hiss. Hiss hiss went the slippery snake one day. Hiss hiss with, went the slippery snake. Hiss hiss went the slippery snake one day. And they all went hiss hiss hiss. But we know snakes say shooby dooby doo, shooby dooby doo, shooby dooby doo. We know snakes say shooby dooby doo. They don't say hiss, hiss, hiss. That's pretty silly. Let's do it one more time, all right? So, hiss, hiss went the slippery snake one day. Hiss, hiss went the slippery snake. Hiss, hiss, went the slippery snake one day, and they all went hiss, hiss, hiss. But we know snakes say, shooby dooby doo, shooby dooby doo, shooby dooby doo. We know snakes say, shooby dooby doo. They don't say hiss, hiss, hiss. <laughs> Good job. All right. Thanks, Andrea, for those fun songs about snakes. I'm Heidi, and this is Peppa, our Plains hognose snake. Do you think that snakes really say shooby dooby doo? No, they actually do make that hissing sound. But how do they make it? There's an organ in their throat, it's called a glottis, and it pushes air through it to make that hissing sound. She's pretty relaxed right now, so she's not hissing at me. She's just using her tongue to smell me, using that Jacobson's organ. Some other things that Andrea mentioned in her song was that they rattle. Now, a hognose snake does not have a rattle on the end of her tail, but she can move her tail back and forth really fast in the leaves and it sounds like she's rattling. 
that's one of the ways that she helps to protect herself from other animals that she is afraid of, which include humans and other animals that will want to eat her. One of the other things that Andrea mentioned in her song was how they move. They don't walk like we do, they slither. Some of them slither forward, some of them slither sideways, and just what Peppa is doing right now is she's curling up into a ball. This is how they can strict their prey or to help keep themselves warm by curling themselves around themselves. Now, hawk noses are a little bit different than that garter snake that we saw earlier in the week. The garter snake had a long, slender body. And if you see this hog nose, she's short and stout. That's because of the environment that she lives in. She has this upturned nose that helps her to dig in the sandy soil of prairies or open fields. She burrows in the ground, not only to protect herself and to have a home and to lay eggs, but she also digs in the sand to find eggs. That's one of her favorite foods. Besides mice and other lizards and smaller snakes, she loves eggs, either turtle eggs or bird eggs that are on the ground. And that shovel nose helps her to burrow down to find those eggs. Like I said, she likes to burrow and that's one of the ways that she gets away from other animals. There's some other ways that she helps to protect herself. She will strike, which is a fast moving towards that, that other animal or person. It's to scare them because they're more afraid of us than we are of them. So she will do at least two or three strikes. And if that doesn't work, one of the other things that she does, now this is really cool. She will flip over onto her back so her belly is up. She will open her mouth really wide and pretend that she's dead. Just like playing possum then this is the gross part. If she really wants to make those animals feel that she's really dead, she will vomit up the food that she just ate and blood or feces will come out as well. That's pretty gross, isn't it? But it helps to keep those predators away from her. I'm gonna turn it back to Andrea now who will read some fun storybooks about snakes. All right, hi, I'm back with a book for you. Um, and this book is called Help, A Story of Friendship. And it is by Holly Keller. And she wrote the words and she did the illustrations for this book. And I'm reading this to you with permission from HarperCollins Publisher. So thank you, HarperCollins. Okay, so help. A Story of Friendship. One morning, Hedgehog found Mouse covering himself with leaves. What in the world are you doing? asked Hedgehog. I am hiding, said Mouse, from Snake. From our friend Snake? asked Hedgehog. Yes. Mouse whispered, Fox told Skunk, and Skunk told me that snakes are very dangerous to mice. Oh, that's silly gossip, said Hedgehog. You know Snake would never hurt you. Come on, we can walk together, and you will be perfectly safe. Mouse hesitated. I insist, said Hedgehog, and so Mouse went along. Hedgehog talked about little things, but Mouse wasn't paying attention. He was still worrying about Snake. He looked around nervously, and he looked everywhere but at his feet. Can you see what's happening? Oh! He cried, help! 
and Hedgehog peered down. You should be afraid of yourself, Mouse, not of Snake. <laughs> it's not funny, Mouse yelled. I've hurt my foot and I can't get out. Are you sure? Hedgehog shouted. Yes, Mouse yelled. Stay calm, said Hedgehog. I'll get help. And just then, Squirrel walked by. Mouse had gotten it gotten into his head to be afraid of snake said hedgehog and he was so nervous that he didn't watch where he what he was going he fell into a hole and hurt his foot and now he can't get out can you help but squirrel couldn't help it would be too dark she said and there might be spiders <sighs> rabbit came along and hedgehog told him about Mouse and Snake. You know how to go down holes, said Hedgehog, and Rabbit looked into the hole. Hello, Mouse, he yelled. It's too deep, Rabbit said to Hedgehog, and the walls are too straight. I wouldn't be able to hop out. Well, why don't you go, Hedgehog, asked Squirrel. Well, because Mouse would have to get on my back and my prickles would hurt him, Hedgehog said. The mouse started to cry. How do you think Mouse is feeling? I think he might be feeling scared. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Hedgehog heard the grass move. It was Snake. <gasps> What's going on? said Snake. Shh. Hedgehog whispered. Mouse fell into a deep, dark hole. He hurt his foot and he can't get out. <gasps> Is it a secret? Snake whispered back. Well, not exactly, whispered Hedgehog. It's just that we don't know how to get him out. Squirrel is afraid to go down by herself and Rabbit wouldn't be able to hop out. And I'm too prickly. Well, then I'll go down, Snake said. No problem. Oh no, said Hedgehog, that's not a good idea at all. Not at all, said Squirrel. Not at all, said Rabbit. You see, Snake, Hedgehog said, Fox told Skunk and Skunk told Mouse that snakes are dangerous to mice. Mouse was trying to hide from you when he fell in the hole. But I have always been Mouse's friend, said Snake. Well, of course you have, said Hedgehog. So I'm going to rescue Mouse anyway, Snake said. Well, how will you do that without scaring Mouse? Asked Hedgehog. Someone get a stick said Snake, and Squirrel did it. And now tie my tail around it, said Snake, and Rabbit did it. And now make sure the, night, the knot is very tight. Hedgehog did that. Now watch. And when Mouse saw the stick, can you see that way down in the hole? He grabbed it and Snake began to climb the tree and slowly Mouse came up. How cool is that? It is so good to have friends that can help you climb out of a hole. <laughs> Mouse saw Snake and gasped <gasps> and then he saw the stick still tied to Snake's tail. Snake saved you, said Hedgehog. He did, said Squirrel. He rescued you, said Rabbit. Because I would never hurt you, Snake said. And Mouse, Mouse turned a deep shade of pink. I am very sorry, Mouse said. Oh. Snake, Squirrel, Hedgehog, and Rabbit helped Mouse hobble home. 
and they bandaged, bandaged Mouse's foot, and he lay down to rest. Several mornings later, Hedgehog was taking his walk, and along came Mouse, and he was holding a bouquet of flowers. Where are you going? asked Hedgehog. Well, I'm going to say thank you to Snake, said Mouse, and to give him some flowers that I picked. And Snake was very pleased to have them. Oh, that's a nice story of friendship. Of course, we all know that in real life that sometimes snakes and mice aren't friends, but it's fun to read a story where all of the animals are getting along, right? All right. Hello everyone, I'm back with another story and I have Mouse Count by Ellen Stoll Walsh and she also did uh, the pictures and the words so she's the author and the illustrated illustrator for this story and I'm reading this to you with special uh, permission by Harcourt Books so thank you Harcourt for uh, allowing us to read this book so mouse count one fine day some mice played in the meadow they were careful to watch for snakes. But when the mice got sleepy, they forgot about the snakes and they all took naps. And while they slept, a hungry snake went looking for some dinner. Uh oh! On his way, he found a nice big jar. I will fill this jar with the dinner, he said. It wasn't long before he found three mice, little, warm, and tasty, fast asleep. First I will count them and then I will eat them up, he said. Mouse count. One, two, three and he dropped them into the jar. But he was very hungry. Three mice were just not enough. Soon he found four more mice, warm, little, and tasty, fast asleep. And he counted them. Four, five, six, seven, but the snake was very, very hungry and seven mice were not enough. At last, he found three more mice, little, warm and tasty, fast asleep. And he counted them. Eight, nine, ten. Should we count the mouse, mice with him? One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten mice. Ten mice are enough. And now I'm going to eat you up, little warm and tasty, said the snake. Wait, said one of the mice. The jar isn't full yet. And look at that big mouse over there. The snake was very greedy and he hurried off to get that big mouse. And while he was gone, the mice rocked the jar one way and the other way and until it went over nine, ten, oops, excuse me, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the little mice uncounted themselves and ran home. And the snake reached that big mouse, but it was only a cold, hard rock. And when he got back to the jar, it was empty. Those clever mice. And there's a mouse dancing on the rock. The end. 
Well, thank you so much for reading stories with me today. And now um, Heidi has a little bit more to tell you about the hognose snake. See you next time. Hi again. Those are some fun stories. Thank you, Andrea. Do you remember why Mouse was afraid of snake? Anyone who watched our Wednesday bull snake feeding, you saw him eating a mouse, probably a really big mouse. That's because that's what snakes eat. They eat mice and lizards and eggs and hognose even will eat some toads. But how do snakes adapt to catching their prey? One of the things that they have is their camouflage. If we look at Peppa's back, it is brown and some light tan and some spots. And if I were looking out into the prairies with the tall grasses, I would see that she blends in pretty well with that surrounding. Same thing with when she burrows down into the sand. Sand is usually around one of these colors, so she's able to blend in and her, her prey, her food, won't be able to see her very well. So that's one of the ways that helps assist her in catching her prey. Another way that she can catch her prey is by hearing her prey. Hmm, if I look at her head, I don't see ears like we have ears. I don't even see holes. Her hearing is a little bit different. She doesn't have these external ears like we do but she does have an internal ear or interior ear that can receive vibrations. And those vibrations go down into her jaw and she can feel her prey running around near her. So then she knows if she needs to go to the left or to the right, or if she can feel them running below the ground and to burrow down in there. Another way that she can catch her prey is what she's doing right now. She's flicking her tongue and she's smelling the air. So she's taking her forked tongue, oh, there it goes, and she's flicking it out and then she's pulling it back in and tasting the air with that Jacobson's organ. So those are the three ways that snakes have adapted to helping them be one of the top predators in their environment. So after watching these videos, I hope that you found snakes as cool and interesting as I do. Keep watching this page for more fun nature videos.